what is up everybody today I wanted just to do a quick overview on this guitar I'm borrowing for a friend I only get it for the day so I thought I'd make a video on it um, this is a ESP LTD travel guitar um, the whole premise is that it cuts down on size by getting rid of the headstock and shrinking the body a ton and uh, instead of a headstock you put the bead end of the string here uh, you bring it over the bridge goes over these kind of roller things and then it hooks into locking tuners in the back you turn tune it from these pegs um, it's got big frets and it apparently has a plect setup uh, so that means it was strapped into a CNC machine and it was measured, all the frets were measured, and then all of them were leveled by a machine. So you get a super accurate, um, super flat, super well set up guitar. Um, it's also got a like ESP active humbucker. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute and it's got one volume one tone and the tone knob when you push it in it kind of has uh, like different frequency boosts I'd say um, to me you kind of have like four modes and two of them are terrible but I think they're supposed to be used when you're using this in headphones. You can plug headphones into this and your phone into this and you can jam with backing tracks when you don't have an amp. I think that's what those two modes are for. It's kind of like a distorted, mid-focused sort of sound. And the other two are kind of like clean sounds once a little softer and rounder I assume that's because you don't have a neck pickup so you can use that instead of a neck pickup and the other one sounds the most like what a normal bridge humbucker should sound like um yeah so I think this guitar is good in theory but I think it falls short in a lot of areas. One, um, it needs a battery. First of all, active pickup. This is also the worst active pickup I've ever heard in my entire life. I worked really hard to make it sound good in the intro. <laughs> um, it just doesn't seem that harmonically active and it seems noisy and maybe kind of just overly noisy and muddy and kind of loose and mushy and that's everything an active pickup is supposed to not be it's most active pickups try and get rid of those qualities um, the frets are good, but the action came way too high. So the whole idea of plucking a guitar is to get the action as low and comfortable as you can. And this guitar, for some reason, has a higher action than most factory setup guitars, uh, which kind of boggles my mind. <laughs> Um, the frets seem good, and that's kind of the only redeeming thing about this is the frets. They're big and shiny, and it makes it easier to play. Um, you know me, I hate gloss necks. Uh, they're sticky and horrible. The other thing is... Uh, it needs a 9 volt and 3 batteries. I assume the 9 volts for the pickup and the batteries are for the 
kind of EQ switch positions in the tone knob. Another thing that kind of falls short is the tuners. They are horrible to try and tune. Uh, they are locking, and that's about all I have to say that's good about them. The other thing is, since you only have one pickup, you're going to be using your volume knob a lot. And this volume knob is super stiff. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is unbelievably stiff. Like, I've never felt a stiffer volume knob. And ironically enough, the tone is super slick. So the knob you're most likely never going to use is really, really slick, but the one you're going to use all the time is super sticky. Uh, another thing is this thing is super awkward when it's sitting in your lap because the body is shrunk. I know other travel guitars will have like wire inserts that you put in to make it feel like a full-sized guitar and to make it sit on your lap like a full-sized guitar. And this one, it's just kind of weird and it doesn't really sit that well. So the good things about this, after ripping on it for <laughs> however long that was, is the finish looks pretty and I like the binding. I'm not normally a binding guy. I think binding usually looks terrible, but this binding looks kind of cool. So the finish is cool, the binding is cool. I like the idea of big plecked frets, but really, that's about it. To me, this is like a toy, right? If they were charging around $500, probably around like $350, $400 for this. I wouldn't be as upset. They're charging somewhere around $850 for this. And I think at that price point, this should be a lot better than it is. So in short, it's overpriced. It's good on paper, but it under delivers. And that's really all I gotta say. So, save your money. Uh, if you like this video, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, if you hated it, go flame me in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you can go to my Patreon and I'll give you all the backing tracks you want for just two bucks a month. So yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.